Welcome back everyone. My name is Sagar and we are back here with another video. So today's day 193 of our POTD series and today's this question name is make array elements unique and this is given a medium level question but uh, this is a very straightforward question because the approach the solution of this question is very easy. So first of all we are given an array of size n so there are two inputs and our task is to find the minimum number of increment operations required to make all the elements unique. So that means there are non-unique elements, multiple duplicate elements in present in our array and we have to make them unique by incrementing them, okay? And no value in the array should occur more than one. So that is the thing. And in an operation, a value can be incremented by one. So we have to return the minimum number of operations that we have to use to make our array unique. And uh, suppose in this example, so there are this duplicate value and we can just convert this two to three and the array will have all the unique values. And we did only one operation so that is a very straightforward question so the very first thing that is coming to your mind will be that first of all we can create a set of all the values right so first first approach that was also coming to my mind that first of all I when, whenever I am getting this one I will just add that to our set so suppose for this example so first of all here is our set so consider it as a set and this is our array one two two so suppose for this example we are also getting one two times so when we are hitting one so this is our first time we will check our set so one is not present in our set so we will just add it and we will move ahead so whenever we will again get this one so we will just uh, we will just change that okay so now we are hitting one again so this is a one again and we will check in our set okay one is already present so we will just change this one and we will just change it to Two because two is not present in our set and we will just add now two because one is now changed to two but after that when we hit two so you can see after this we are we are at here two and now we also have to change this two so this two is already present in our set so we'll change this two to three and this will be three here and after that this two is again here so we can ju now just change it to three but three is also present here so we cannot just change it to three so we'll change it to four so the total number of operation one two two 2 to 3 and 2 to 4 so one one operation here one operation here and two here so total of four operations and i think that is that will be our answer because uh, yeah so that will be our answer okay and a total of four operations and uh, here the time complexity will be time complexity is o of n and space complexity is o of n and uh, i think the time complexity will not be open because we have to linearly iterate suppose for example uh, we are having here one 2, 3, 4, 5, up to up to 10. So first of all, we are hitting all of them one time. Okay. So we will just add 1 to 10 in our set and uh, they will be all present. And after that, again, we are having 1 to 10 again, second time in our array. So this is our array. So suppose this is our example. Okay. So first of all, when we are hitting 1 to 10 first time, so we will just add all of them in our set. And Second time when we are hitting, so first of all we are hitting one and then we will check, okay, one is present in our set, yeah, right, so one is present. So what we will do, first of all we will change one to two and we will just see two is also present in our set. So we will not change it to two, we will change it to three. But we will see three is also present in our set and four is also present, five up to ten. All numbers are already present in our set. So what we will do, we will just linearly iterate here. So this is also taking time and this will be, I think, approx it will be also n and uh, here you can see time complexity of traversing in our array will be n and uh, when when there are more duplicate values so we have to also traverse to check what is the non duplicate value so the time complexity will be here also almost n and the space complexity is n so this is not a o of n a o of n approach and uh, that is why we cannot just use here you can just see the constraints and uh, we don't have to see this thing because this thing this expected time and space complexity is not present in our contest or any other platform okay so we have to just check for constraints so 10 to the power 5 and this approach will not work because this is almost n square and uh, now we have to optimize it so we have to think of optimize approach so first of all what we have to think so first first thing that we have to remember is we have to compare the numbers because uh, th suppose this one two one so this is one here and we can just see this is not this is not a duplicate value but when we are trigger when we are hitting this one so first of all we have to know that thing that this is a duplicate value so how can we know that this one is a duplicate value so first of all we have to compare this but we cannot just store values so what we have to do 
and uh, the basic thing that was hitting to my mind is we have to maintain an order so that we can just compare them with each other so suppose there are three times one and then two two so we can still compare so first of all you can see we can just compare this with this one and if we can now just change it and we can just compare this with this one and we can now see that this is not in order so first of all we were maintaining the sorting order and now you, we can see this is in decreasing and this is a larger value this is smaller value so that is not our expected order so we will we will also change it and after that, this is three this is two so this is not expected order so we will change it and the same here this is not our sorting expected order so they should be in incrementing order and we can now change it so let me now just show you this approach so first of all we have to maintain the order and that will be our incrementing order so first of all we will just sort our array in an incrementing order so one two two so suppose in this example so first of all we have one and now we have two so first of all we will check if this is in sorting order yes it is and uh, we have to maintain them in strictly increasing order because they cannot be equal because we have to always find unique values so first of all we will check with this two with this one okay they are not equal and they are in increasing order so we will just move ahead and we will check this two with this one and they are not in sorting order because they both both the values are equal so what we will do we will just change this two to be previous value plus one because now they will be in sorting order so previous value so that will be always our minimum answer so previous value was two and this will be previous value plus one that means two plus one will be three and the total number number of operations are one and uh, suppose for this example we we can just expand this example so this is here three and three so suppose there are two more threes and after that we can ju just check this three so this is our new number okay so this three is our new number and uh, now we will just check this three with this one so is are they in sorting order no they are not because we have to maintain the incrementing order so what we will do this three will be equal to previous value plus one so this will be three plus one that is four so total number of operations are two now and after that we will check this three with this four so they are in sorting order no this is now less than this one so what we will do we will just do three is equal to previous value plus one so four plus one this that is five and we did two operations so three to five will be two and uh, now the final result will be four and uh, now you can see all are in sorting and unique order so that is not necessary that we have to return sorting order but uh, that is obviously unique order okay so if we are maintaining and checking for all the values if they are unique or not so we also have to maintain the sort uh, the unique order okay so I hope now you understand that this approach and this is also under our constraint 10 to the power 5 and we just have to sort and then iterate. So the time complexity will be n log n for our sorting and n for our traversing and uh, you can see it will be in our constraint and also the expected one. So let me just now show you the approach. So first of all we will just sort the array and after that we have to traverse. I have to also maintain the answer counter and now we have to start iterating from our first index so we will just start checking from this one and we will just check with the previous value okay and we will check if this value is in, is in greater than or equal to this one and if it is then we will just update it i equal to 0 i should be less than i equal to 1 and uh, what we have to do if our previous value is uh, greater than or equal to the previous value is i minus 1 and if it is then i is value so that means they are not in sorting order so first of all that means this is our 2 and uh, suppose this is also our 2 so let me just take this example again 1 2 2 so first of all we are taking this value with this previous one and this is our is this is our i minus 1 s so is value is smaller no is value is not smaller and not equal so we will just move ahead and we will check this one with this so this is our is value this is i minus 1 so is value is equal to our i minus 1 so we will just fall in this case and what we will do is value will be now equal to previous value plus 1 and we also have to increment the difference in our array in our answer answer counter okay so what is the difference so difference will be how many values we are changing so that will be equal to this greater one value minus this smaller one value plus one so that's it and you can also see this is our uh, this is here two so two and this is our, our smaller value two minus two so this will be zero and plus one 
so the difference will be one here okay and let us again expand this answer expand this array so this will be here two and this will be here three so this will be previous value plus one and after that suppose we have more threes here three and three so we will check this three with this one and they are not equal so we will again fall in this case and this ith value will be equal to previous value plus one so this will be equal to this previous three plus one that is four and we are adding answer what we are adding in our answer this i minus one th value that means here it is three minus our this current value that is also three so three minus three plus one that is here one okay so the difference of these values are one and after that we will check this three with this one so this is now our previous value Anna, and we just updated it so we will just again fall in this case because the ith value is now smaller than our i minus 1 th value so this is our ith value and this is our i minus 1 th and uh, this is now smaller one and what we will do now we will just add to our answer this 4 minus our current value plus 1 so 4 minus 3 so this will be 1 plus 1 so the total answer will be 2 so we will just update it to 2 times so 3 plus 2 will be 5 and uh, now you can see this is in our sorting order and also unique values and that will be our final answer let me just check now and it is the right solution and uh, the time and space complexity is o l log n and o1 so that is it about today everyone if you like this video then uh, do like do like this video and uh, also subscribe to our channel if you understand the approach and uh, thank you for watching.